Hello, it is Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. Welcome to Bliss Point of the Year 2020, our annual bracket-style competition award show where the seeds are made up and the rankings don't matter. Check us out at bliss.house for all of our amazing content. My name is Jordan Kaufman, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Billy Gatewood. Well, hey. And Paul Cole. That's me. That he said my name. Hey, you're the guy. And and Paul, can you can you do us uh, us a favor and the listeners at home a favor by kind of telling uh, telling people what what they're signing themselves up for? Yeah. So on Bliss Point, we have a lot of dumb fun this time of year. It's very important to note that any pick that made. Our individual final lists, or especially this bracket, it's worth checking out. It's a worthy playlist just in and of itself for your end of year. Reflect back on the dumpster fire that was this year. But uh, here's the point. We're going to pit these against each other. Album to album against the death. Gladiators. Yeah, just for our own amusement and honestly probably for our own sadness, but... It's important to remember they're all good picks. It's just luck of the draw, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's disrespect them. Yeah, let's uh, let's have have a good fight, gentlemen. Um, we have a pretty brutal uh, bracket this year. Um, in this episode, we're going to focus on uh, rounds one and two. Um, so I'm going to read through the all of the matchups that we have for round one. Um, so our first matchup is uh, seed number one, Samia, the baby, versus seed number 16, Gulch, Impenetrable Cerebral Fortress. Uh, this matchup is hellish. <laughs> matchup number two, uh, seed number eight, Leon Lahavas, uh, self-titled, uh, versus Phoebe Bridger's Punisher. Um, <laughs> round number three, we have the Japanese house with, uh, I forget the name of the EP... Chewing cotton wool or something like that. Yeah, chew. Yeah, chewing cotton wool um, versus clippings. Visions of bodies being burned. Uh, round number four. Billy, here you go. <laughs> uh, the Midnight's Monsters versus Run the Jewels. Run the Jewels <laughs> four. <laughs> Woo! Uh, round number five. We have Dogleg Melee uh, versus Car Talk. Pass like pollen. Um, round number six. We have Cabal. Drag me down versus Logics. No pressure. Round number seven, uh, we have uh, Boneflower Armor or Armor uh, versus Touche Amour um, Lament, and then I keep saying round. What I mean is match. Uh, match number eight, um, rounding out round number one, is Blue and Exile Miles versus Lumelda's Hannah. Um, so lots of good matchups for today, right. and let's fucking get right into it. Matchup number one, Samia the Baby. Versus Gulch, Impenetrable Cerebral Fortress. Um, what, is anyone feeling a particular way? I I'll go on a limb and say uh, I know I know Gulch was mine. Um, uh, my choice to put it on the list, even though I think we all enjoyed it. Um, I think Samia's probably a stronger record. I don't. I'm sure Billy agrees, but I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. I think the problem I'm running into is they're just so similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really, Samia really should tour with these guys. I think it would be a great, uh, great booking. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, um, Samia is going to be up there for me this year. Uh, Gulch is really good. Uh, it's something different. It was really enjoyable. Um, but Samia for me, uh, it's going to be hard for anybody to beat that that pick for me. So I think I got to give it to Samia. Paul? Uh, Bl- Blood Gulch is a really strong map. You really got to <laughs> control the center lane. Classic. Uh, get the high spots for the snipes. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Samia, it just seems like a better all around pick. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And Samia takes it. Easy, easy uh, one seed matchup. Easy, easy. We All needed right. one to be easy because this one is pain. <laughs> this, this one, I'm actually very interested to see where people lie uh, because I have no <laughs> idea where I end up. Um, yeah, well, at what point does now. it stop being about like what's better overall musically and like who deserves the shine? I mean, I who th- deserves to be th- discovered? I think we, 
I think we lean into it and just really go fucking full bullshit. Hey, I'll point out, I'll point out the coin flip again. I will. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so matchup number two, we have Leanne Lahavas self-titled versus Phoebe Bridgers Punisher. Um, I know for me, these are probably neck and neck, uh, for two and three on my personal album of the year list. Um, these are two of my favorite albums from this year, hands down. Um, I I don't know. Like I, I know Billy, you had mentioned some um, some worry that maybe Phoebe hadn't held up as much, or you hadn't listened to Phoebe as much as you thought you would. Yeah, I mean, when we were debating on the bracket, um, I actually wasn't going into it blind, um, not knowing how you guys felt about it. I wasn't positive that Phoebe was even going to make this list because we hadn't really talked about it much since we talked about it on that episode um <laughs> it's what do you say though because she's been everywhere oh, even yeah. in this pandemic and yeah. i it's almost on my end i feel like we don't talk about her because it's she's kind of a given well, it's yeah, like that's, not that's talking about it. rtj every week exactly i mean that's that's a great point i think that was what just kind of misled me into thinking maybe it wasn't holding up as well as we thought it might but like you said, she's just everywhere, so there's no real point to talk about it on repeat. Yeah, and if, to Paul's point, like, I think I have seen Phoebe on every list I have read pretty high up as well. And I think Leanne's been getting kind of snubbed, um, even though it is, I think, a, an extremely strong record from front to back. And you, I, I could hear an argument for Phoebe's record kind of... Um, slowing down a little bit in the middle. I, I think it starts off really, really strong and ends really strong. And the middle part of the record, I think, kind of blends together a little bit. That's not to say it isn't still good. Um, but yeah, that would be the one thing I would maybe lodge against Phoebe over Leanne. Yeah, I just, to me, Leanne Lahavas is still kind of the new kid on the block. It's It's fresher. It's something I didn't expect this year, but Phoebe Bridgers is an artist where you kind of look forward to their album years in advance. Yeah. Especially now, like uh, with the, I guess that's another good question. Billy, you and I were very hype going into this record. And I think Paul was at least a little bit. Did yeah. Punisher live up to the hype for you guys? So this is, this is where I, I'd start wondering how I really feel about this. Um, because I looked forward to this album for so long and I really enjoyed it the first time I listened to it. And I just haven't listened to it that much since. And it sounds like you're trying to make is. your problem, her problem. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I love the production style. Um, I love that she kind of took a different, um, you know, course of artistic creativity and stuff like that along this album, but I listen to Strangers in the Alps so much more than I listen to Punisher. When we talked about Punisher, I said I really connected with Stranger in the Alps, and everybody was telling me, like, no, man, this is so much more fleshed out and mature. It is. And, like, and that, uh, it totally is. And that's why right. I'm confused about why I'm not listening to it like I thought I would. So, does. Is that I haven't heard you really talk about Leanne, Billy? Is this necessarily a vote for Leanne, or is it more a knock against Phoebe? No, because the Leanne album is great. Okay. Um, like I listened to it again today to just kind of refresh, and like a lot of it stuck out as things that I remembered from listening to it on previous runs. So it's hard to tell. I mean, obviously, like the the stronger points on Phoebe's albums are a hundred times stronger than on Leanne's. I think. Yeah, I think I think, I think whole, Leanne is consistently really, really good. Right. And, but like Savior Complex and um what's the Boy Genius uh B side that's really, um, really, really good. I forget what it's called. Yeah. Um I'll look it up. Um Paul, are you leaning uh, a certain way? This is the hardest matchup for me in this whatever you call it, this match or this, this section. Yeah. But I I don't know. I, it's one where I really have to struggle and start questioning, like, what is the point of this? What we're doing here? <laughs> and, and, and so that's why I'm I'm leaning Leanne. 
yeah. this time it's, around. I, I, I because I have to remind myself, right none of this shit really means anything. Phoebe Bridgers is on a ton of people's uh, album of the year lists, yeah, and deservedly so. Do we yeah. lose all credibility if Phoebe loses in the first round? No. That, that Fuck makes no. It, it makes, it we're, we're makes us cooler. Yeah, it makes edgier. us cooler. Yeah. <laughs> It's, we should have picked more stuff no one's ever heard of. <laughs> the The song that I was thinking of is Graceline 2, which honestly might be one of my favorite songs of the year. Yeah. But and, I, I, I mean, think I know the end is like the strongest. Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah. For sure. Um, it sounds like we're leaning Leanne and I'm OK with this. I, I like I love both of these records, like I said, probably equally. But I think I, I did spend a lot more time listening to Leanne and was vibing with it a lot more. Than I was when I re-listened to Phoebe, even though Phoebe. See you on the other side, Phoebe. Bring yep. back the baritone guitars. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Paul put the nail in the coffin. Lee and the Don't let your manager sing backup vocals anymore. <laughs> All right, round number three. Matchup number three. Sorry, I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, matchup number three. We have the Japanese house tune cotton wool versus clipping visions of bodies being burned. Um, and. The, so this is the only thing that I struggle with in our format is how does an EP fare against not EPs? Um, just by the nature of it having much less content. Um, I think uh, I see this EP is good. I don't know that I would pick it even if it was an amazing EP over clipping. I will say we always seem to give things negative mark like full album releases negative marks for overstaying their welcome with too many tracks. So if you were to take the converse of that with a shorter EP that just stays there perfectly. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I know how I'm leading on this. Um, the Japanese house, despite it only being four tracks to me, it is four perfect tracks. Um, Clipping is super cool. It's super industrial and experimental. And, you know, I I hadn't heard a lot of the V Diggs until you kind of, I mean, I knew he was from Hamilton and all that good stuff. But, like, until we started diving deeper into <laughs> his other work, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about him or, like, what he does. Yeah. And, and clipping is super cool. And Ooh. I enjoy it. But I do know... That I'm leaning Japanese house on this. <laughs> Billy did the smartest thing he could do to sway me by bringing up the fact that the Hamilton guy's involved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not the Hamilton guy, but he's yes, one he of the Hamilton guys. <laughs> he's anyway, the Hamilton guy. Anyway. Um, I'm kidding. Who doesn't I, like money? It is I, a... I, Paul, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say it's a very pleasant, palatable, like, in theory, replayable... EP against a really cool artistic kind of thing that I've been digging all year long. I was thinking that the clipping album, it wouldn't have a lot of replay value, but so many of these hooks have been stuck in my head, little earworms. So many of the verses are sick on this. I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning clipping. I think I am as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I I think the one thing that I would say that, that you touched on, Paul, is is that I don't know that I... I listened to Japanese House today, and it's it's still really good. I don't know that I would come back to either all that much. So I don't really have that to say, f- like, in, in favor of Japanese House. Ugh, um, Japanese House is on repeat. Well, how, so good. how memorable so good. is Japanese House? I mean, when we're all me, standing... Like, yeah, I don't know. For when, me, that's that's going to be up top for me for my year picks. Um, that's something that I just find myself going back to over and over again. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't know. I, I I think I think I definitely lean clipping just because I I like that sound more, and I, I I'm very excited to hear a full record from Japanese House. But I think my votes for clipping. I just feel okay. like 10 years from now, when we're standing in a record store, if those still exist, and we're discussing memorable things, clipping's the kind of thing you bring up because it, it was a milestone. Like, look at these guys that were really helping to define the horror genre back then, whereas Japanese House is so good, but it if you described it to me in conversation, there's no way I'd pick it out. For, I'd have to look it up, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. You just I'm... you guys just hate that that Bonavere features are being overdone <laughs> at this point. Yes, I, really, I do. I hate, too I, hate, I don't like people being Bonavere. successful. He Taylor did not need the Bonavere feature to to win everybody's hearts over. So Clipping it is. All right. All right, let's go. Billy Bear's the only man that hasn't broken her heart. <laughs> Round number four. I've been warming up for this one all day. Billy, I'm so excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, it is The Midnight with Monsters versus Run the Jewels 4. Um, I, I want <laughs> let, let, let me let's hear start. Your, let's hear your opening salvo. Let's go. Okay, let, let me start. So, I feel like with Run the Jewels... They, when he's saying this, guys, I want you to picture him as Michael Clark Duncan <laughs> in overalls. the Jewels, I feel like they've been so underappreciated this year. I think we expect so much greatness from Arn the Jewels um, that with this release, for some reason, I feel like they're just not getting the respect they deserve. Um, with the timing of this release, with the quality and implications of this release... Um, with LP's production being as good as it's ever been, I truly don't understand how this doesn't get more talk. Um, but the Midnight put out monsters. <laughs> <laughs> he is up a good point, Jordan. They put out when monsters. You think, when you think about something to expect, you expect greatness from Run the Jewels. When you think about the Midnight... You don't expect them to exceed greatness, <laughs> but but they do, and they did. Wait, so are are Billy's expectations low when there's midnight releases? No, I'm just saying I expect them to be great. They exceeded greatness this time. I think the production on Monsters is far and away the best production I heard all year. Um, it's just clean and warm, and it just it's they took a different path than they typically do. They went a little bit more. I guess not mainstream, but a little bit more palatable. Um, I just, there's, the, there's hooks and, and riffs on monsters that like, I just can't get away from. Um, I think this is just one of the better releases of the year. And unfortunately it got matched up against another great release. That's just not going to cut it. <laughs> so we can put Billy, the midnight. I, I like bravo. what you guys said. I like what you guys said, but we can go ahead and put the midnight moving on. Billy, bravo, bravo! That was that was very nice. I, I'm actually I can't disagree with anything he said right there. I mean, it's true. I I don't know why people were lukewarm on RTJ. I feel like a lot of the old school fans were psyched about it because the emphasis on on that kind of thing, like just the boom bap tracks. But I I do feel bad because I I genuinely enjoyed this midnight release <laughs> and. I, I don't know. I told little Billy not to name it. I said, don't name it. It looks sickly. <laughs> you don't get attached. I I will say that uh, this is probably the most I've enjoyed a Midnight release. That is very true. That doesn't say anything. <laughs> uh, the, the other half of that We've never statement, said bad things about the Midnight. The other half of that statement is... I I really don't like the first half of this record. <laughs> really? The yeah. first half is so good. Like through Promenite, I cannot stand. The rest Promenite. of the record I really, really enjoy. Oh man. But Promenite is garbage. You cannot tell well, me that. No, Promenite I will is not, not deny that. Promenite okay. is not good. It but is Dream Away and Oh, there's just so many good tracks. I just think on it's the first half. I think it's too <laughs> slow. Like I think the it it feels like two different records, and I, if if it they had feel like blended it yeah. better, I feel like I would like it more. I think I sense where this one's headed. As did Billy it, ten minutes. Ago. There's there's <laughs> no world in which I would ever, even for the meme, I would never vote for the Midnight over Run the Jewels. I'm sorry, Billy. I'm sorry. How dare you? <laughs> Well, that's what the book is saying. I I do. That was that was fun though. That was a fun exercise. Man, I'm getting killed on this first half. <laughs> you well, rep for them hard. They would be proud of you. Uh, you actually, you have red some, man and a rep. You have some favorable matchups in the back half. Let's hope. Well, I mean, yeah, matchup like this, number six is entirely your matchup, so you can pick whichever way you want to go. But that's going to be actually tough for me. But yeah, um, anyway. matchup number five. Uh, this one is interesting. Um, Dog legs melee. Versus Car Talk, Pass Like Pollen. Um, 
Billy, do you want to... I'm, I'm still not sure where everybody stands on Dogleg. I know everybody kind of enjoyed Dogleg. It is it is probably top 10 for me this year. Um, but I know, Billy, you really, really loved the Car Talk release. Can you kind of give us a an update on, on where you're at? Yeah, I mean, this Car Talk release is is only going to get bigger and bigger, I think, as time goes on and as they put out more and more music. Um, I feel like this is the Car Talk album is pretty much everything that people who um, like that kind of like folk indie kind of sound uh, want out of a, an indie record like this. I think it's just done perfectly. I think they just nail it as far as, you know, it's a short, maybe like eight or nine songs. Um, and time length is maybe like 30 minutes and it just is hit after hit after hit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just dog leg is, is quite good. Um, it's, it's exciting. Um, but I feel like that's very similar to other things you'd hear. I think car talk does what they do better than everybody else. I, I really, I, I checked out, it's been a while since I listened to dog leg. Um, I, I'll listen to songs here and there just cause I added them to all my playlists. Um, but mm-hmm. I did listen to car talk quite a bit today. Um, in, in the, the songwriting on that record is just really, really impressive, especially for a debut. Um, really good hooks and a lot of emotive vocal performances. Um, the opener is really, really strong. Um, the closer is really, really strong. Um, yeah, it, it's that cool, like, it, I hate to say Pine Grove because, you know, Car Talk has that kind of country lilt occasionally. But I feel like they go grungier. They they get a little more raw with it, where Pine Grove is just very, like, soft and, you know, um, I guess that's, that's what I'm looking for. A- anyway, um, yeah, yeah I, I think I think Car Talk is really, really strong release. Um, Paul, do you have a, a feeling either way? I find myself going back to Dogleg more. I definitely take the point about the fact that it's not the most unique thing in its airspace. But it brings me the joy and makes me feel like I'm young. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Wow. It's up to you, Jordan. It is. It is up to Yikes. me. I, the the only reason I'm leaning car talk is because I don't want this to mirror my own personal list. <laughs> hey, I mean... In, uh, in a weird way. So I feel like... I feel like I'm going car talk. I think it's a really strong, different release. And if we want to stick to uh, being different, I, I think, I think, well, I guess both of them are, are strong picks for that. But anyway, I'm picking car talk. All right. Yeah. That's a surprise. All right. Matchup number six. Uh, Billy, we're going to, Paul and I are going to leave the room and we're going to let you pick whichever <laughs> one you want. <laughs> this match- one's actually kind of tough for me. Yeah. This one's match up number six, uh, is Cabal Drag Me Down versus Logic. Logic's retirement record. No pressure. Um, Billy, you want to, you want to kick it off? I honestly don't know where to start with this. I mean, the Logic record is super good. That addition to... Getting new ID back on the production, I think, just brings that album to a whole other level that's ten times better than anything he's put out um, in the last, you know, five, six years. That Cabal record is just brutal. Uh, One of the more, I guess, um, fun finds that I've had. That was a band that I hadn't heard of. (laughs) Fun being relative. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Somebody I hadn't heard of and was, like, really blown away by and surprised um, about the quality of of that album. So it's it's really tough to me because they're so different. Um, I mean, just knowing how I lean in general, I'm probably going to lean metal over hip-hop in general. Um, And that Cabal album is just so brutal but it's a tough one i don't know it's it's a toss-up for me right now i haven't decided yet paul i I know you made kind of a turnaround on the logic record how are you feeling i don't know it's so much a turnaround (laughs) i just 
I don't like him. That's this, <laughs> but his work and this album are excellent. They're like pretty flawless. So I just objectively, for me, my bid goes to no pressure. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I have no idea where you lean on this, Jordan. I have I, no idea. I'm with you, Billy. I really, really, really liked both. Um, I think Cabal. If I had to pick something um, to kind of weigh one in favor of the other, I'd say Cabal gets kind of um, like wall of sound in in like a knocked loose kind of way. Um, right. Mm-hmm. It's which is if if you're into that type of music, that isn't an issue. Like I, I would say that like Logic has a nice diverse set of songs. But I guess you could also say that, like, Logic isn't necessarily... That record is really strong, but isn't necessarily the most unique thing uh, you would hear in a hip-hop record um, this year. No, he's the most unique. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he came but, up with all those flows. Yeah, that that No ID production, I, I think, nets a huge win for him. It, it's just so, so, so good. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, Billy, I, I'm going to make you pick cause I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll lean whichever way you want to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? Let's go. No pressure. I really okay. do think the pr- production value of it, um, is what puts it over the top. I like it. I like it. Solid choice. All right. Matchup number seven, bone flower armor versus touche amore or more. Uh, that's a uh, lament. Um, oh man, I feel like we might be going head to head on this one. This one might come down to Paul. I don't know. I, oh. I don't know. I really, really like the Touche Amore record. Um, I think the Boneflower record is more interesting. Like, I wow. think it's it's Touche Amore is is really strong for post hardcore, and is just a solid record all around. I don't know that they're doing anything different. Um, and I think Boneflower does set themselves apart with the, like, uh, like you had said, uh, God, what was the band that we loved last year? State you had compared Falls. this to. So, yeah, State Falls. Like, yeah. the, like, black metal, metalcore, um, post-rock, like, lots of different diversity going on here um, that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and was surprised, like, I, I don't know why I didn't, love this record more when you had brought it up because I'm listening to it now and I was like, shit, like this is a really strong record. Heck yeah. So nice. Paul, do you, do you feel a particular way? Uh, I vibe more with bone flower, but this is probably, I said earlier, it was one of the tougher matchups because I was passionate about it, but this is a tougher matchup for me because I, I, I just don't feel that strongly about either one, but I definitely would reach for Boneflower more. All right. Billy, I assume you're also Boneflower? That's that's where I lean. That's, okay. That album's so good. That was easy. All right. Yeah, look at that. Boneflower, I taking it. not that. All right, matchup number eight. Um, Back to pain. <laughs> Blue yeah. and Exile uh, with their gigantic record, Miles versus Lomelda, Hannah. Um Paul, do you want to do you want to kind of tell everybody where you're at? Oh man, I, if I knew where I was at, because <laughs> Blue and Exile, I mean, I just it's probably my favorite hip hop album of the year. It, there's just so much going for it. The verses are great. The production's great. I love the sampling. Um, but on the other hand, Lamelda, I've been enjoying a lot at the end of the year here. It's not even just the normal stuff you would expect, like the really stripped down production and kind of the, I don't know what you would call the qualities of her voice, but it's got that like indie darling thing all over it. Yeah. Um, And then it goes even a step further. I was listening to the way that they incorporate like small reed instruments, just singular touches, not, not a whole wind section or, or strings or anything, but just really small. Uh, that's the only way I can describe it. It's like small nuanced instrumentation that really complements what she's doing. And the whole thing still leaves her voice so much space in the mix, but they're just such different styles. 
Yeah. Uh, really? I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'd probably lean Blue Egg, Blue Exile, because it, I just feel like it would probably resonate with more people. But oh, oh Melda is the kind of thing I'd love to see more people making that kind of music. I want, I want Jordan's take. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought Lamelda would be higher on my list uh, come the end of the year, and I don't know. I, it's something about the first half of the record I think is really, really strong and has some of my favorite songs from this year. I just have trouble really remembering the back half. And granted, like Blue and Exile is a different beast because of how gigantic it is. Um, but I just remember. I remember how infatuated I was with that record when it first came out, um, and just how impressed I was with how much they had managed to create a cohesive, strong record that was over an hour long, which is something that we constantly complain about. And it's funny, I was looking back at my list from last year, and I think we had complained about the same thing last year of like too many artists are coming out with too long of albums and they, they never justify the length. And I feel like this is the first record in a long time, um, where that has actually like, it, it made sense for the record to be that long. It's more than okay. If it's good. I personally listen to stadium Arcadium every day. (laughs) (laughs) At least that's what I do when I get up every morning. That's a lie. I can't get through stadium Arcadium. So it's really more of a two day cycle. Oh, that's fair. Then I just start at the first track again. <laughs> I got a disc changer just to play Stadium <laughs> Arcadia. You buy two copies. <laughs> Billy? Um, yeah, I mean, Blue and Exile is my favorite hip hop release of the year. Uh, they take this. Yes. No question. Look at this. All right. All right. Props cool. to Paul for I that like one. It. I like it. If Logic makes it through this one, Blue, oh, Blue yeah. and Exile fuck, fucks them up. Fucks them up. All right. Absolutely. So, we have finished round one. Um, I think maybe we'll take, like, a, a quick break before we come back for round two. Is that that sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll fix it in post, as the kids say. <laughs> uh, back to the bracket. Round two. Let's finish out this round two real fucking quick. Because I'm tired of technology. Uh, matchup <laughs> number nine, we have Samia the Baby versus Leanne LaHava self titled. Billy, something about album of the year, right? Yeah, so let's go full transparency mode real quick. Uh, <laughs> we got through half of this episode, uh, and I was losing terribly. <laughs> so I'm going to learn from my mistakes, and I'm going to fight a little harder this time around. Oh, yeah? So. What do we got for round number one? Or, we, I guess, round have, two matchup number one. We have round two matchup number one is Samia the Baby versus Leanne Lahavas. And I don't know that this is going to go a different way. I'm like, loving this. This is like that I'm Tom Cruise movie. He thinks he's going to change the course of events. <laughs> I'm entertained by you fighting stronger for Samia. So, uh, all right, uh, please, please go. Let's go. All right. So we can start off with, um, f- another full transparency. Samia is going to be my album of the year. No question. It's just going to happen. So reasons why let's go down the list. 21 reasons why please well, do not 21, but we've got 11 because there's okay. 11 songs. So okay, we've got that's, pool. That's pretty good. Pool is just a perfect intro slow piano driven intro where she really shows off her voice um and just it gets you set up and ready to go then we jump right into fit and fool got this high energy kind of like groovy you know pop track kind of takes it to a new level continues into big wheel kind of does the same thing uh big and then wheels limbo, real good. what's that big wheels real good big reel is real good uh limbo kind of switches it up again uh, gets a little fun and a little hip. Um, I believe it's it's limbo, bitch. Well, yeah, <laughs> but then then we get real, we get real into it, and then we've got uh, stellate triptych and does not heal three tracks right in a row, real soft, somber, uh, really getting the feels. Like 
if there's anybody that can put some emotion behind her voice, this is this is the chick. Um, but then we jump right back into Waverly, picks it back up again, um, go into Winnebago, kind of the same deal. Um, Minnesota's got like a cool little piano riff, and then my favorite track on the album is the closer. Is there something in the movies? Just hits me, gives me goosebumps every time I hear it. Um, it's just front to back, an outstanding album. Uh, not a bad song on the album. Can't say the same about Leanne. I'm sorry. What's the bad song on Leanne? I mean, there's just not anything that sticks out all the way through. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm assuming the defense rest. Uh, yeah, I might have to call another witness. We'll see. <laughs> That's how this works, right? I see what you guys lay out, and then I just uh, keep on. Uh, uh, Mr. Kolb, uh, <laughs> prosecutor, please, please take the floor. Leanne Lavas. There's no, there's, there's no discussion here. It's Leanne Lavas. Billy, did you, did you want to call another witness? <laughs> Question: Am I allowed to filibuster? <laughs> point, point Fuck no! It's <laughs> gone on long enough. <laughs> you cannot filibuster. <laughs> I, uh, I, I will say, I do love the baby quite a bit. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest. Your lengthy argument had me consider: What if I changed history? You would and instead yes, play with his heart. Senia. I mean. It would be the right choice in history, but I, all Billy, right I'm so history, sorry. I just i I listened to Leanne more. I just I love that record too much. Sorry, I can't wait till you change your mind <laughs> next week, and you're like, "Wow, Samia's really good." Like, I wish I would have listened to it more last week. Hey, hey, Samia is gonna go really, really well on my top twenty-five, and then I'll probably never listen to the album again. So. Do you oh. have a small violin to play? Hey! Wow, that's uh, that's all she wrote, baby. Leanne Lahavas, congratulations, Billy. Good job, proud of you. Dang. Even uh, with this phantom no, weak no. track that's supposedly <laughs> in there somewhere. <laughs> Matchup number ten: clipping visions of bodies being burned versus run the jewels. Four. Uh, is anyone leaning clipping? No, I'm not leaning clipping, but it's excellent. It's yes, just that it's, pitted it's, against Run the Jewels, something that has, I mean, just staying power, something that has multi generational appeal. I, uh, I think we all know what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, we're going to respect Run the Jewels like they deserve to be respected, and like they haven't been getting most of the year. Agreed. Agreed. Run the Jewels four. It is matchup number eleven. This one's very interesting. Um. We have Car Talk, Pass Like Pollen versus Logic, No Pressure. Billy, these are both of your picks, I believe. Uh, yeah, but I have one that should win, and it's not going to. Maybe it will. I don't know. We'll see. Which one? I mean, Car Talk should take this. That I, Logic I, album is great. I'll but... I'll hear an argument for Car Talk. I, of, of the... Actually, I don't, I don't know how Paul feels about Car Talk, but I, I know I probably lean Car Talk because it was the more unique experience that I had this year than Logic. I mean, I would take great pleasure in knocking off Logic now that we've given <laughs> adequate praise and highlighted <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I think that's that that settles it then. All right, that was actually Car smoother talk, than I thought. Car Talk, it is. All right. That was sufficiently dumb in a way that I enjoy. Um, <laughs> all right, matchup number 12. Yeah. Last one for round two. Uh, we have Boneflower Armor versus Blue Exile, Blue and Exile's Miles. This is a tough one. Yeah, I don't... Is it, though? Is it, though? I think this one's going to come down to Jordan. So, and Billy, I'm assuming your you're leaning Boneflower? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's tough, though, because... Uh, Blue and Exile, it, it's definitely my favorite hip hop record of the year, like I said. Um, but obviously, being an emo kid at heart, I just fall back on Boneflower a lot more. And it was just one of the more uh, interesting finds of the year and something that I 
listen to on repeat. That came out like early in the year, and I still listen to it all the time. I I think they're both strong records, but I think this tournament has not been particularly kind to Paul in its history. So I feel like I have to vote blue. Oh man, I don't stand a chance. <laughs> I think it's I think it's blue. It's blue. <laughs> oh. I thought you meant like you were Are going we just... blue like a state might, and I was like, that's a lot of assumptions about me. <laughs> yeah, I'm flipping blue, baby. Are, um, we just, are we just kind of teaming up against me right now so I, that like we can I, ensure that I don't get a win? I'm gonna be Billy. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Up until that matchup, I was not voting that way. I it just happened to be it happened to work out that way. Wow! But wow, every other matchup was not influenced by that. If so. Run the Jewels ends up winning this thing, which wasn't even a real pick because we did an entire episode on just that release. <laughs> no, it, I'm going to be real bitter. Actually, what what you're saying is it should be the only correct pick because of the albums left, that is the only album that all three of us picked for our album of the week. Of will, the year. Be, will I be able to claim the three-peat? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to talk about that in the rules. Um, all right. But all right. Anyway... We Wait a minute. What? Yes. Why wouldn't he be able to do a three peat? If if it's, I, I mean, I was saying, I guess you could argue the technicality because all three of us picked Run the Jewels three. Could Billy really put that on his crown as as a three peat? Oh, I see. He, what you're he had some okay. help, you know. Like it wasn't like a solo effort. He wasn't like LeBron dragging the Clav- the Cavaliers to the playoffs. It was like a like a heat situation. Oh, oh. so what you're saying is that the red bandana is a hairline issue? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Bandana guy has hair problems. You heard it here first. He's got uh, luscious locks. I won't stand for what you're what you're saying right now. Round one and two in the books. Congratulations to all of our winners and losers. It means a lot to us every year that you all come out and uh, fight to the death in our musical combat tournament. Um, so, yeah, check us out on uh, Bliss.house. That's Bliss.house for all of our content. Uh, check in with us next week because um, we're going to be putting out the final episode. Uh, where you will find out uh, who actually won for uh, Bliss Point Album of the Year 2020. Uh, and then we'll have all of the goodies uh, that go along with that. So we'll have a playlist containing all of the best albums of the year. We'll have our personal lists and all of that good stuff. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, that's it. Thanks, thanks for showing up, fellas. Don't lie to the people, yeah. Jordan. All the, Japanese all the albums that fell are bad. To midnight, you'll always be one, two, and three in my heart. Yeah.